Hello, I'm, I'm Cordero Bentley. I'm interviewing Mrs. Barbara Wilson. Today's date is February 15, 2011. We are at 307 Home Avenue, and the time is 11.07 a.m. Tuesday. How you doing today, Mrs. Wilson? Fine, you? I'm doing pretty good. Good. Um, so to start this off, were you bo were you born in Mansfield? Yes, I was born in Mansfield. Seventy three years ago. What's it been like? Like, why did your why did your family settle in Mansfield? Um, cause some more of their family was here already. My mom came. She came first, cause her sister was here. And then she met my dad. He came from West Virginia. Like around what year was that? Do you remember? When it came here? Yeah. I'd say like about 31, something like that. So pretty early on. Mm -hmm. um, did you have any brothers or sisters? I didn't grow up with any. I grew up as an only child. Mm. I had some half brothers and sisters in Georgia, but I grew up as an only child. What was life like as like the only child? Well, next door, <laughs> next door I had an aunt. I had an aunt that had eight kids, and they were like sisters and brothers. In fact, my aunts, my four aunts, and one uncle all lived in the same neighborhood, side by side. Houses were side by side, and. They treated me like I was their child. They were the last one of them, so I didn't have any problems. Like, what type of thing, what was life like in your family? Like, what did y'all do for fun and things like that? In our big family or my small family? My mom and dad, man. Who do you mean? Yeah, like, eat both sides, either. Um, we went to church all the time. All the time. <laughs> and we go to circuses and the movies and just the normal thing. And each other's house, you know? Mm -hmm. Other aunts and uncles' house. Houses. Mm -hmm. um, where did your parents work? My mom worked at the Leland Hotel. My dad worked at this Empire Reeves Steel Mill. Yep. I think all, practically all the men on our street worked at the steel mill. I think that was his reason for coming to Mansfield. He always told me that he gets to like on a tr hitchhike here on a train. So, I guess he did. <laughs> All right. Um, so you said your mom worked. Your mom worked where? What did What did she do there? Um, I don't know. She worked at the Leland Hotel. Whatever they do, she might have. I, I worked there too after I got out of school for about. A month. She probably ironed or cooked. I don't know. It's been so long. Well, do you remember where that hotel was located? Mm -hmm. At the corner of Park Avenue and Walnut. So, so around what year was that? What did she work at it? when I was in school? Like forty-three or four. It's early. Where did um where did you go to school? Crevlin. Okay. Yep. The Bowman Street. We call it Bowman then. Bowman Street. But it's Crevlin now. Do you have any teachers that you remember especially well? Mm-hmm. I remember all of them. In the first and second grade there was a Miss Joyce, she taught. And uh third and fourth grade there was Miss Barnett. In the fifth and sixth grade, Miss Carter or Miss Beck, both of them taught. One died, and so the other one came to replace her. So, yeah, that, that's how it was. Do you remember like the subjects that they taught? Like, what did what did they teach you? 
or you gotta understand, they taught us it wasn't subject like it is today. They taught first and second grade taught everything there was for first and second grader to know. And third and fourth grade taught everything, geography, math, taught all subjects. And Miss Beck, she taught the same thing as Miss Carter, which was all the subjects. It wasn't like it is now. Were you involved in any activities in school? Not in grade school. But when I got to senior high, I was involved in GAA and choir and faith team that was a Christian organization. That's probably all I can remember. What, what exactly is GAA? Girls Athletic Association. Oh. So like basketball and or yeah, anything. we had sports. We played sports and different things. Went skating. Had a good time. Did Did you go to college? Yeah, I went to Mansfield Business College, but I didn't go to. Um, I graduated in '55 from senior high, and I didn't go to Mansfield Business College till '66, which is about 11 years. 11 years. What did you study there? Stenographics. Stenographics. What is, what is that? I don't know what stenographics <laughs> is. I'm Been a secretary. Stenography. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that, that, the hotel was your first job? No, it was, oh no. It was your first job? Oh, I can't tell you. Um, <laughs> my very first job on my own was, I was in 12th grade. My mom, she was cleaning the house. She used to do housework. And she went down south. And she told me to tell the woman she does housework for that she'd be back that summer or sometime. But anyway, I didn't tell the woman, I just came. I came and cleaned up her house until school was out. I made $8 a day. Sounds like good money back then. Yeah, fair to get money. Mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> Around what year you think that was? Your first job? That before you graduated? Yeah, I was in the 12th grade, I think. It was probably 1954 or 5. What, um, what about other jobs? Did you. Uh, oh, I have a million jobs. Huh? Yeah. You want to know about it? Please. <laughs> Let me see. I worked. At Mansfield Plating Company down here on Fifth Street, I cleaned offices when I was 15, and I did babysitting jobs. I worked at Westinghouse in the 70s. I worked for the city recreation department in the summer times. Um, I, I've had several jobs. Yeah. So, who was who was the neighborhood like Where growing I, up? Just like the whole city in the neighborhood. Who I was, think the atmosphere. I think our, ours was wholesome. I think it's the, it was the best place to raise a kid during that time. Now, naturally, I'm prejudiced. I think that you know, but um, I was there for all my cousins. And we had friends all around. We could stay out till till the sun went down. And we had a a light post, a light out in front of my house. It's on the corner of Stockings and Crystal Spring that we all gathered. We play kick the can, hide and seek, <laughs> and we, till get. We tried to stay out past dark, but we really weren't allowed. We're not allowed to be back on our own porches and stuff mm -hmm. and that's it we went to church that was incorporated so you you, you were born and raised on the north end mm -hmm. is that correct mm -hmm. okay i was raised on crystal spring street i was born on crystal spring street at 167 crystal spring street 
my cousin, some of them were born on Crystal Spring Street, too. What, uh, what church did you attend? It used to be called just St. John, but now it's Oasis of Love. And this has been Greater St. John. And that's the church I went to. Um, what were the stores and restaurants in the neighborhood? Oh, wow. Let me see. When I go down Crystal Spring Street to make a right turn, the right, the first store that I come to was, well, it wasn't a store, it was a restaurant. Wait, let me back up. On the corner, there was Wayne's automobile. Mm -hmm. He fixed cars, of course. And on the next corner, right from him, there was um, mm, there was a Dr. Pepper factory, and they okay. I go past there, going up toward town. There was um, a place called Sam's News. It was really a restaurant, and they sold beer, I guess. And next to him was Fear Hearts. They so beer I know. And then there was Joe Wilhite and the Allens. Well, Joe Wilhite had the store first and then the Allens had a grocery store, a small grocery store. And there was Mr. Lumpkin's, Lumpkin's store. They had, it was a pretty big little grocery store for the vicinity it was in. And then there was a filling station right next to Lumpkins, I think it was a Texaco, I'm not sure. You want me to name all of these? Now, you're de <laughs> are you describing going, you, you said the corner of Crystal Springs and Maine, and or is that? Crystal Springs and Bowman. And Bowman? Yeah. So you were, he what you just described is like heading up Bowman Street? Yeah. yeah. Towards Toward downtown? Time. Yeah. Okay, right. okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Gosh, it's hard to imagine all that being <laughs> right there. That's it amazing. Was. That's amazing. It is. Yeah, and, I mean, and, anything else you remember, please do, okay. don't, don't um, mind us. I mean. Then, past that company house, you know the company house? No, what's the company house? You know where the company house is, on mm -hmm. Bowman? It sits on the corner of Harmon, it sits on the corner of Harmon and Bowman. And right past there was a little hotel, Mr. Smith's Hotel. And I'm going up Bowman Street toward town. Mm -hmm. And then there was a cafe called Beautiful Phase Cafe. And then there was another one on the corner of Fern and Bowman. And they put that highway through there. So they had to, you know, when they put that highway, it's, Fern, um, it's not Fern Avenue, it's, it was John Long. They built the highway, but they had a beer joint where they had that highway just about. And my mom bought that. She had it moved to Charles Street. She bought the beer joint and started having church in it. Okay. Yeah. And across the street, as you go on up a little bit further, there was a market called Davis's Market. And then there was Marshall's Market. And across from there, before you get to Marshall's Market, was Stimler's Bakery and a dairy store. I'm naming all of them. <laughs> That's and then there was Castos, an, a beer joint, and a, a grocery store on one side, and a beer joint on the other. And across the street from there was a barber shop. And then you go on up further on Bowman. And there was Crebling School. And across from there was a drugstore and a meat market. I think it was Boliant's. I'm not sure. And below the Boliant's, there was a little store we went to, all the school kids went to. They called it Grandma's. A little old lady used to run it. And before, well, across from there was Baker's Cleaner. Uh, and down on the other side of the street was Smith's Hardware, Smith and Pete. They sold toys and stuff and they sold hardware. Mm -hmm. 
and right beyond there, still going up town, up in Bowman, there was um, Sunoco Station, I think, no, it was Shell Station, and another station. Across the street from there was Isley's, Isley's store, and let me see what else. Headed down almost to the tracks. After you cross the tracks, rather, there was where Jones Potato Chip is now. It used to be an A and P store. And let me see. Down below the A and P store was a couple of beer joints, and across the street from those beer joints was another beer joint. I think they were owned by Miss Gibson, Attorney Gibson's wife. I think they were owned by her parents, I'm not sure. Then you go on up the hill, you would see another market on the left side. And I don't, I'm not sure, it might have been named Widos, I mean Wider, W-I-D-D-E-R-S. And then um, there was a school, and you passed that. And I guess I mean them all. Up to Park Avenue, there was um, a car wash, but I think it was after the filling station. And that's, that's about it. That's fantastic. That's yeah. quite a memory. Yeah, but I want to tell you about on Crystal Spring Street now. Sure. Now, we had a lot of families, you know, black families and white families. They were not segregated out there. We, the first ones I can recall is up on the west end of Crystal Spring Street was a family, Mr. Denny, and down from him were the Tolivers. Their family is still on Bowman Street, but at the time they used to be on Crystal Spring Street. Clifford Lee, Clifford and Annie Lee. This was when I was like, they were living out there when I was like four and five years old. And the Swans, you know them? George Swan? Yeah. His family, his grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. Swan, they lived out there. Um, and his name was George too. He was George the first, and this, I know three, it was three in all, I guess. And next door to him lived the Perrys. They were a white family. And we used to fight with all the time. <laughs> they were, my mom, used to, she liked to have church, so she was down. She was inside having church with the, with the grown-ups, and we kids were outside fighting. <laughs> and the Reynolds and the Kings were up on the hill, and another family, they had a man named Popeye, a white family that lived there, and coming on the other side of the street, there was, who was there? Oh, the Murphys, the Murphys, and Mr. Martin, and my Aunt Gladys, Bradford, and uh, before the Clemens, the Clemens came there, I think in the 40s, but before they moved there, um, I'm told Paul, Paul Bruce lived there, and I know next door to him was a Newman's, Mr. Newman, and then Mr. Grant lived behind Mr. Newman, and when you went up to the hill, you saw Mr. Mark Rouse and Miss, Miss, I mean, Sammy J, his house. I guess it was his house. And Maud Harper lived next to him. And a white family, the Prior Knox, lived down below her. That's it. That's all the people who lived on that street. Do you want the next street? <laughs> <laughs> so would you, 
What, what I'm hearing is um, it was a pretty mixed community. There were yeah. Lots when of, I was when I was small. Uh huh. Now did that change as time went on or? Yeah, practically. I would say there's all. By the time I was fifteen, I think they were all all <laughs> black. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you slow, did you slowly see white people basically leaving the, the neighborhood, or well, how did you perceive that? Not really, not the, not the neighborhood, because if you're talking about Hannah Road, that was in the North End, too. Mm -hmm. And our white friends that used to do on Crystal Spring Street had moved from rental out to buying on Hannah Road. Okay, so Hannah it Road. wasn't sort of a white flight kind of mm. situation. No, they, I don't they're think They're just so. moving a street over or whatever. <laughs> they're just getting or, away oh. from us. Uh, well, that, the, so you <laughs> you thought that, that they were moving away from... No, because we went out there and played with them. We'd sneak out there and play all the time. Okay. When I was in Crevin and Simpson. And on Lewis Street, you want that? Sure, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, sure, please. I'm trying to think some of the families that were out there. Um, let me see, Miss Sarah Williams, she was out there, she's a, a pastor of a, she was a pastor of a church, and it was a whole different crowd that were living out there when I was out there, when I was growing up, than it is now. The Ramseys were there, um, the Macruders. But they came after I was pretty big, you know. But um, Maddoxes were living out there on that street. They moved to, to Crystal Spring Street finally. And Miss Carrie Dry. Who else? Um, the Clemens, who used to live in the Bruce's house, were living on Lewis Street too. So, so how is it different today? Like, how do you, how is it different, the times? The times or yeah, the just neighborhood? Like, do yeah, just everything. Mm. There's a lot of difference. The houses are different. The, sto the stores, they don't have them stores out there no more. And just, the, I guess it's due cost of, no, it's not due to cost of the economy. They just grew older and they moved, or big superstores moved into town, and they just don't have no need for those small stores. Oh yeah, don't let me forget John's Park too. That was a place we played. What was that like back then? Huh. Well, I was in in grade school. It was a place. It was all white. John's Park. All the whole neighborhood was all white. And the teachers would t take us there for outings and things. It was a place to go for outings. But we, we played up there. Those from Crystal Spring Street who wandered away some evenings and stuff, we'd go up there and play ball and play with the other kids, play with the white kids. It was, we had, now, we weren't segregated. The kids we knew played with us. The white kids we knew, we played with them. And, we, and we're still buddies. Mm -hmm. Some are still my friends right today. So, what was uh what was life like for African Americans in Mansfield in like the nineteen forties and the fifth in the fifties? Like, how was what was life like? I think it was good. It was very good, as far as from my perspective. Um, it seemed to me that people just got along. You didn't hear all this cutting and killing and stuff like that. Now, people went to jail for liquor and things in the 50s, and they weren't selling crack, and they weren't, I guess they weren't, and they weren't um, taking dope and, well, they might have been taking a little, like marijuana or something, but it was, it was okay. Life was good. How did racial bias affect you? Did I don't think it affect me at all. Now I might be naive, but it just didn't affect me at all, because of 
I played with white kids, I worked with white people, and they're just people, you know? How did the, the civil rights movement affect you? Or affect oh, yeah. yeah. The civil rights did? It did. Um, now, I must say, when there was a time, there was a Cressy store, now we're talking about Uptown, not in North End. There was Coney Island, and there was Kresge's and Neisner's. Kresge's, you, they had an eating counter. They had a big counter and a restaurant and stuff like that. But we got hot dogs and stuff, and we had to stand up and eat them. We could not sit down at that, that park where you sat down at. We had to stand up at the counter to eat. But see, I didn't... I just, it was just a way of life with me. I didn't even realize it was segregation, you know? Well, what happened if, if you tried to sit down? Nothing, because my cousin James and I wouldn't sit down. <laughs> and nothing happened. They didn't wait on us. Right. Until James said, uh, are you prejudiced or something? And somebody did come and wait on us, mm -hmm. finally. So could you... Could you tell me about your church and like what is the role of the church in your community? Like you said, you went to oh you go to Oasis alone. Mm -hmm. Like what what kind of role do you think the church played in the community? Then or now? Then, uh, and, now? then and now. I think. Then it's a place um, to go to try. I mean, a role it played in the community. They, I don't think, I guess the people came here and got saved and they taught kids how to behave outside the home and outside of school. I think unless you have proper training in school and home and church, I don't think you'll make it really, not like you should. And today we have all sorts of things. We have like programs for alcoholics and for dope and we have all kind of pro all kind of programs like we feed the hungry and uh, that's about it I mean that's not all but that's all I can think of right now um, could you tell me about your fondest memory growing up in the North End just like a fond memory Mm, Christmas time. At Christmas time, when we all go to my aunt's house, my aunt Duck, Mrs. Jordan, we go to her house, the whole family and friends, and they bring cakes and chicken and food and stuff, and we just had a good time. That's my fondest memory. My very fondest. I wish it was still like that, but it's not. So what did you like about that time so much? Just the unity of the family? Yeah, they we sang. All my aunts played the piano. We sang, and mm -hmm. it was church right on. We had church, but we had church then too. But it was nice. We have a talent program. Everybody do their little part. It was really nice. I miss it. You, um, do you have a worst memory, perhaps? Anything yeah. like that just sticks out that you just don't yeah. like? Yeah, no, it wasn't. It's when my aunt died, um, my aunt Duck, the same one. When she died, that was my worst, the worst. She was the first of my whole grown-up family that I'd grown up with. She was the first to die. And it, it hurt and, you know, took its toll. Is there anything else you'd like to add that we haven't covered? Um, not necessarily. Anything you want to say to like anybody that's watching this, or that like any, any last words you want to say? <laughs> I better not say it. No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> not really. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. So, mm -hmm. anyway, can I ask, mm -hmm. were, uh, were you involved in the friendly house at all? I know a lot yeah, of people. Yeah. Would you mind talking to us about that a little bit? Yeah, I got a thing in this, I think, from 1947.
Do you like photos? Did, no, uh, my friendly house card. Oh, okay. And I kept my kids' friendly house cards from 1960-something. And uh, I knew Russ and Mary Gimble, the ones that used to, I guess they organized the friendly house. Mm -hmm. It was on Main Street, and I went to kindergarten down there. And that's been many years ago. <laughs> Almost 70, almost 70, yeah, about 68 years ago. And uh, we went there when we were teenagers. They had a lot of dances and stuff that we'd sneak out, sneak out of church and go to some of them. <laughs> and weddings and I've gone to weddings there. I've gone to a lot of boxing matches, all kinds of things. In fact, it was a nice mainstay in the community for everybody, I think. You know, you could always find something to do there. And my, like I said, my kids, they go there. They have gone there, you know. How about, um, like, Happy Hollow? Did you, did you ever go I didn't, but my daughter, she went to Happy Hollow to camp. Mm-hmm. Yep. She spent a couple summers down there. One of the ladies was telling us about um, that the friendly house was segregated. Did do you have any memory of that at all, or no? No. Now, I guess she meant they had the white on one night the dancers and the black on another night. Mm -hmm. They didn't mix it up like they did the white. The white when I was coming along, you know. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's what she meant by segregation. Yeah, and, and I mean, I would say that's segregated. I mean, and you didn't mind that at all, or that didn't bother you? That I didn't pay no, I was just happy. It didn't make me no difference what yeah. they did. <laughs> when I was a kid, I didn't care what grumps did. As long as, I mean, as long as, as long as you keep a kid happy, that's it, you know? Any other memories of, um, you know, your school days at Kreveling or anything? stands out uh I remember a whole bunch of paddings oh, yeah. <laughs> at Crevin. They had a teacher named Mrs. Van Voris. I might get sued for this. They had a teacher named Mrs. Van Voris. She'd paddle you for anything. I had a a candy bar in my pocket in the cloakroom and we were out in class. I guess you weren't supposed to bring her to school, I don't know. But she paddled me, you know? Mm. Yeah. What about senior high, any memories of? Uh... That was just fun days. Yeah. Yeah, fun days. All of us, we'd get out on the campus and talk, and we just had a, that's, mm -hmm. see, all the kids that I went to senior high with, I practically had been to school with them before, except the kids that went to Appleseed and the kids that, uh, with the hedges and all that, but we had fun. We had a lot of fun. That's where I met, well, not where I met, where I got to know, really know, Don Nash and all of them. And well, Wilbur Fowler and Clarence Bridman and all of them. We had fun. Yeah. What, now, what about your husband? Um, what What did he do for a living? Worked for Gorman Rupp. Gorman Rupp? Mm hmm. Okay. For 20 years and then he retired. Yeah. Did you meet him here in Mansfield then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What uh, what year were you married then? 1966. Did you get married here in Mansfield though? Mm-hmm. Did you? Do you remember where at? Well, I'm sure you remember where at. Mm, I, I won't say. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Well, unless anyone else has any questions, I think that... Again, you don't have anything else you want to add or any, any other memories or... No, I can't think. Well, back to the church, we um, I noticed in the paper they had um, a picture of a little lake in, on the front page this past week. I noticed that um, that little lake is where we used to get baptized in. We come from Mansville over to Crestline. They had a little picture of a lake in Crestline. And we come from church. To over to that lake and got baptized. Hmm. All the churches did, in fact, I believe, because we didn't have any baptism places. 
we used to use Liberty Park, but uh, they stopped us or something. I don't, I don't know what happened. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, again, thank you very much, Mrs. Wilson. We appreciate your time and inviting us into your home. And You're welcome. So. Yeah. All right. Come again. Yeah. Come again. Mm hmm.